okay, so now we're gonna perform an orthopedic examination of the hip. First thing I'd like to do is examine the patient walking. So could you stand up for me, please? Just come towards me. Um, and I'd just like you, if you can, to walk over to one side of the consultation room and back. Thank you. So while he walks, I'm looking for signs of adductor weakness, which would indicate a Trendelenburg gait, or any antalgic gait, or any stiffness in the swing phase of the gait. But his was normal. So now we're gonna move on to some of the tests that are most useful to perform standing up. The first one is the Trendelenburg test. So what I'd like to do is examine his right hip, which is his painful hip. So I'll put my hands out in front of me and I'll ask the patient to place his hands onto mine, just gently, not putting any pressure on them unless he needs to. Now, because his right hip is the painful hip, I'm gonna ask him to lift his left leg off the floor. So could you lift your leg, left leg up for me? And yeah, that's it, and stand on your right leg. While he does this, I'm looking at the level of his pelvis to see if it's sagged down to the left-hand side. It hasn't in this case. I'm also feeling on my hands to see if he's exerting any more pressure on one side or the other, but he's not, it's symmetrical. So in this case, his Trendelenburg test is negative. Okay, and just put your foot down. I'll also ask him to lift his other leg up as well. So lift your right leg up, and again, the pelvis remains neutral, and there's no increase in pressure on either side of my hands and just stand normally, thank you. Okay, next what I'll get him to do is just hold on to the table here, and I just want to see how far you can kick back both of your legs. So we'll start with the right leg, that's great, so just keeping it straight and just push it out behind you, so that's hip extension, and the other one, straight leg out behind you, and that's hip extension. So you can reach 45 degrees in hip extension on both legs, which is normal range. Okay, could you sit down on the couch for me please? Just swing your legs up, and then lie down on your back. So next, I'm going to inspect his hip over the trochanteric region. We don't normally ask our patients to take off all their clothes in clinic, so it's acceptable to just ask him to roll up his shorts on the side that I'm examining. So if you could just roll up your shorts on the right, that's perfect, just so I can see down this side of the hip here. So this is the region where his greater trochanter would be. I'm looking for any skin changes, sinuses, or surgical sites, including right up the back where sometimes you'll find a posterior um, hip scar, but he doesn't have any. I'll then palpate this region while I'm here for any change in temperature, but there is none. And then I will push down over the greater trochanter just to see if he experiences any pain on palpation, which would indicate trochanteric bursitis, but he doesn't. So that's fine. Okay, just roll your shorts back down for me. Next, I'm gonna compare his leg lengths. So I'll stand at the bottom of the bed, just put his feet together. And okay, so I'm getting a rough view that these legs, leg lengths are roughly equal. However, to measure this properly, I'll grab a tape measure and I'll just see, I'm just gonna lift your shirt up slightly just to see this top bit of your hip. So I can feel his anterior superior iliac spine here and measure from here down to his medial malleolus. This is his true leg length and I'll just check that it's the same on the other side, which it is. If there were any discrepancy, I could measure his apparent leg length as well by palpating for his pubic symphysis and measuring down to his medial malleolus and then doing that on the same side, on the other side, and we could see if there's any discrepancy between those two measurements and whether it was a true leg length um, discrepancy or whether it was an apparent leg length discrepancy. But his are even. So the next thing I'm going to do is get him to do some hip movements. We've already done hip extension, but we need to do hip flexion. So I'll just ask you to bring your right leg up for me, bending your knee, and just bend your hip up all the way up to your chest or as far as you can manage it. So that's actually a very good range of hip flexion. He's completed about 120 degrees there. I'll just put, take him back to 90, very gently, looking at his face to make sure he's not in any pain. Now with the hip flex to 90 degrees, I can then measure his internal and his external rotation. So I usually guide the patient through this because it's quite difficult to explain, but try and get them to do the movement actively. So can you bring your foot in towards you? That's it, just turning there. So he's doing that actively now, and he's got about 45 degrees of external rotation of the hip. And then bring it out for me and bring your heel right out and we'll see how much internal rotation he has. So he's got about 20 degrees there. Okay, and back to normal. And now I'll just get you to lie that one flat on the bed. Um, 
For complete lists, you can examine the other side as well to make sure that the, the um, range of movement is the same or whether it's pathologically changed. So I'll just get you to bring your hip up as well on this side. Just bend your knee up as far as you can to your chest. Brilliant, okay, and then I'll just put it in that 90 degrees area and just bring your hip, your foot in, that's it. And then just bring your foot out, all right, and lay it down. And so they were the same on both sides. Next, I want to look at adduction and abduction. So I'll ask the patient to bring his foot in and cross it over, cross over his leg whilst trying to keep their leg straight. Okay, so here's a good range of adduction, about 30 degrees. And again, same thing, but to the, to the other direction. So bring this foot out as far as you can to that side with the leg straight. Okay, and I can see he's starting to tilt his pelvis there. So I'm just gonna bring him back in um, and I'll just um, steady his pelvis. And can you just try that again? So bring that out. That's perfect. Okay, so he has about 45 degrees of abduction and then I get him to do the same on the other side. So can you bring that foot towards me? That's it, perfect. And then out towards the wall. Okay, and we've got about the same range. So that completes our movements because we've already done extension standing up. The special test that I'd like to perform at the end is Thomas's test to check for any fixed flexion deformity of the hip. So we are examining the right leg as our pathological leg. I will warn the patient what I'd like to do, which is I'm just gonna slide your, my hand underneath the small of your back, if that's okay. And that's for me to be able to keep an eye on what his lumbar spine is doing while he performs these movements. I'm examining the right leg, so I'm going to ask him to raise the left leg, please. Can you bring it up? And just bend your hip up towards your chest, that's perfect. And I want to see if he can keep this leg straight on the bed whilst also maintaining the position of his lumbar spine. If he had a flix, fixed flexion deformity, he'd either be bringing this leg up with it or he'd be arching his, pushing down with his back to try and keep that left leg on the floor. However, this test is negative, so we'll just put that down. And that completes my examination of the hip.